Her mother forced her to marry the Prince of Africa for money, and on the wedding night, this happened. Sophie, a 14-year-old girl, lives in a small town with her mother, a woman characterized by her ambition and selfishness. Since the death of Sophie's father when she was a child, her mother has been solely focused on finding a wealthy man to support them, going through numerous boyfriends without any lasting relationships. One day, her mother calls her into the living room to share some important news. Expecting her mother to announce another romantic relationship, Sophie is stunned when her mother reveals that she has arranged for Sophie to marry the Prince of Africa, the son of the King of Zimbabwe. Her mother explains that the prince, a 25-year-old handsome man, is seeking a wife to fulfill the traditions of his people, and she has offered Sophie's hand in marriage in exchange for a considerable amount of money. Sophie is incredulous and furious at the audacity of her mother to make such a decision on her behalf. She vehemently protests, expressing her desire to study, travel, and choose her own partner. She argues that she wants to be happy and that her mother has no right to make such life-altering decisions for her. Her mother, however, dismisses Sophie's objections as foolishness, arguing that this is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity that will afford her a life of luxury, complete with jewels, dresses, servants, and the title of Princess of Africa. She admits that she, too, will benefit from the arrangement, as the prince has promised her a mansion in the capital of Zimbabwe as a generous pension. Despite Sophie's tears and pleas, her mother remains adamant, declaring that the marriage will take place and there is no room for discussion. Feeling trapped, heartbroken, and without any other options, Sophie reluctantly resigns herself to the arrangement. She is consumed by a sense of hopelessness and despair, mourning the loss of her dreams and the life she has envisioned for herself. Despite the luxurious life that awaits her as a princess, Sophie can't help but feel as though she's being forced into a gilded cage, stripped of her autonomy and agency. Her dreams of studying, traveling, and finding love on her own seem to be slipping through her fingers, replaced by a future that has been dictated by her mother's greed and selfishness. As the reality of her situation sinks in, Sophie is faced with the daunting prospect of marrying a stranger and embarking on a new life in a foreign land, all while grappling with feelings of betrayal, resentment, and loss. The long flight to Zimbabwe is a blur for Sophie as she is consumed with a mix of anxiety, sadness, and resignation. Her mother, on the other hand, seems to be in high spirits, excited about the new life that awaits them. Upon their arrival, they are greeted with great fanfare by the king and the prince, Tendai. Despite acknowledging Tendai's good looks and the friendly smile he gives her, Sophie is overwhelmed by the situation and the fact that she does not love him, nor does she know anything about him other than his title. The palace is a sight to behold, with its grand architecture and beautifully landscaped gardens. The royal family has spared no expense in preparing for the wedding, and the atmosphere is buzzing with excitement. Sophie, however, feels like a fish out of water, uncomfortable in her elaborate bridal attire, and struggling to put on a brave face for the sake of her mother. She can't help but feel ridiculous as she is fussed over by the palace staff, her hair and makeup done to perfection, and her dress adjusted to fit just right. The wedding ceremony takes place the next day in the royal chapel, a grand affair attended by dignitaries, family, and friends. Sophie walks down the aisle on her mother's arm, feeling as though she's in a dream, or rather a nightmare. She goes through the motions, reciting her vows and exchanging rings with Tendai, all the while feeling a sense of detachment from the entire proceedings. It all seems so surreal, and Sophie can't help but feel as though she's playing a part in a play, rather than participating in one of the most important moments of her life. During the reception, Tendai takes Sophie aside and confesses his love for her. He acknowledges that the situation is far from ideal and that he understands her feelings of being overwhelmed and out of place. He explains that he, too, felt trapped by the expectations of his position and the pressure to marry and produce an heir. He admits that he agreed to the arranged marriage out of a sense of duty, but that from the moment he laid eyes on her, he felt a connection that he couldn't explain. Tendai asked Sophie for a chance to make her happy, promising to be a loving and supportive partner. 
Sophie is taken aback by Tendai's confession and is touched by his sincerity. While she's still grappling with feelings of loss and resentment towards her mother, she can't help but feel a glimmer of hope that perhaps this new chapter in her life won't be as bleak as she initially thought. She decides to give Tendai a chance, as she realizes that they are both victims of circumstances beyond their control, and perhaps together they can find happiness in spite of it all. Touched by Tendai's sincerity and kindness, Sophie decides to give him a chance. Rather than a night of romance and passion, their wedding night is spent talking and getting to know each other on a deeper level. Tendai shares stories of his childhood and the struggles he faced growing up in the royal family, while Sophie opens up about her dreams and aspirations, as well as the sense of betrayal she feels towards her mother. As the night progresses, Sophie realizes that she is starting to develop feelings for Tendai. He's not just a prince, but a kind, thoughtful, and genuine person who, like her, has been forced into a situation beyond his control. The next morning, Sophie's mother, blissfully unaware of the connection developing between her daughter and son-in-law, presents them with divorce papers. With a smirk on her face, she reveals her plan to take the money from the royal family and leave Sophie with nothing. She assumes that Sophie, feeling trapped and unhappy in her new life, will be more than willing to go along with the plan. However, she's in for a shock. Sophie and Tendai, having anticipated her move, rip up the papers right in front of her and reveal their plan to expose her greed and cruelty. Sophie's mother is stunned and tries to backtrack, but it's too late. Sophie and Tendai have gathered enough evidence to prove her manipulative ways, including recorded conversations and written correspondence with various suitors she had approached before striking a deal with the royal family of Zimbabwe. With a sense of empowerment and determination, Sophie confronts her mother, expressing her deep hurt and disappointment. She makes it clear that she's no longer under her control and that she will be taking charge of her own life from this point forward. Tendai, standing by Sophie's side, offers his support and assures her mother that she will be taken care of financially, but that she will have no further involvement in their lives. He expresses his admiration for Sophie's strength and resilience and makes it clear that he considers her to be his equal partner, not just a wife. Together they inform the royal family and the necessary authorities about Sophie's mother's actions, ensuring that she faces the consequences for her greed and deceit. As they move forward as a united front, Sophie and Tendai are committed to building a strong and loving relationship based on trust, respect, and mutual support. They realize that while their marriage may have started out as a business arrangement, it has evolved into something much, much more meaningful. Together they're determined to create a new narrative for themselves, one that is free from the constraints of their past and full of hope for the future. Sophie, feeling a mix of anger and sadness towards her mother, decides it is time to reveal one last piece of information that she's been holding on to. She presents her mother with her father's will, a document that she had found hidden away in a drawer shortly after her father's passing. The will contains a clause that states that if her mother ever tried to marry her off for money, she would lose all rights to her inheritance. This revelation is a shock to her mother, who had no idea that such a clause existed. The reality of the situation hits her hard. Not only has she lost her daughter's trust and respect, but she has also lost everything financially. Sophie's mother, realizing the gravity of her actions and the consequences that now have befallen her, leaves in shock and humiliation. Her plans to secure a wealthy future for herself have completely backfired leaving her with nothing. Sophie, while feeling a sense of relief that her mother's manipulation has finally come to an end, can't help but feel a pang of sadness for the woman who raised her. She knows that it will take time to heal the wounds caused by her mother's actions, and she contemplates whether she will ever be able to forgive her. Sophie and Tendai, now generally in love and free from the shadow of her mother's manipulation, begin their new life together with a sense of optimism and hope. Tendai, who has been a pillar of strength and support for Sophie throughout this ordeal, continues to show her the love and respect that she deserves. He encourages her to pursue her dreams of studying and traveling, and together they make plans for a future that is full of possibilities. As time passes, Sophie finds herself feeling more and more at home in Zimbabwe. 
She and Tendai grow closer, and she becomes an integral part of the royal family and the local community. She takes on various projects to improve the lives of people in the region, and her passion and dedication earn her the respect and admiration of those around her. She and Tendai, working as a team, are able to accomplish a great deal, and they find joy and fulfillment in their shared purpose. While the memory of her mother's betrayal still lingers, Sophie finds comfort in her new, loving family and the life she and Tendai are building together. She knows that it'll take time to fully process everything that has happened, and she may never fully forgive her mother, but for now, she's content. She's found love, purpose, and a sense of belonging, and she is determined to make the most of this new chapter in her life.